the, the, it's, it's moving along, it's starting to anyway, and uh, I think that, that it's very interesting that we have officers now like yourself who started out and things were very different, now they, they seem to be a lot more uh, streamlined, you feel equal. Um, then there's, you know, there's people like Cena Evinger and um, uh, Kim Baguki, there's these names that come up, you know, yours was, was a name that come, came up a lot in the community of uh, people that have done solid work. So we know that you, you've had a, a long career here, you've done lots of stuff. Tell me about a situation that was uh, a highlight that you just knew walking away from as, as a cop or a supervisor um, that you were like, we nailed that. This could have went different, this could have been something, but we did this right. I think my experience back in the 80s when we uh, got our new squad assigned to the area of Capitol Hill was it was huge. I mean, it was huge for the area. You know, one of some of my best memories are connecting with the bar owners of the Brass Connection um, and working with them to reduce crime. Crime was reduced, uh, not overnight, but it, it happened very quickly. The criminals realized that the police were now working with the gay community. We would eat in the restaurants, and you know, some of the best memories I've got is that uh, we would start eating in the Brass Connections restaurant, and there was just two of us, and then there were four of us, and the patrol cars would drive by, the officers would look, going, what are all these police cars doing there? And the customers were looking at us too, going, why are these cops in the restaurant? Because they were fearful that we were you know, doing something that uh, they had heard we shouldn't be doing, and sure. harassing customers, but well, we're eating. And they saw us interacting with the waiters and the cooks and the managers and the owners and the customers. And pretty soon we'd have customers coming up to us and chatting about their personal issues and issues that how they the interact with the police. And I'll never forget this. Uh, I've got some great pictures up here of my entire squad eating the brass connection. And, and there were 10 officers with you know, seven or eight patrol cars parked out in front and, and clearly taking over a lot of the dining room. And I will never forget. Uh, we had one of our senior officers who'd been on for 30 years back then, and he was this old, rough guy, and who you'd think was very conservative. When I saw him sitting at the Brass Connection, you know, chatting it up with a big old drag queen, I said, hey, we've arrived. We've arrived. And uh, that's some of my best memories uh, that, I, that I can think of, that I, we really made a difference. And we continue to. Yeah. I mean, uh, that must have, I, I'm smiling just, you know, thinking about it because the, the, uh, the visual of, of what that must have been like. Now, you know, we have uh, the people on the hill, the, the bar owners, and, and, and they, you know, they meet, and they talk, they know who the officers are that patrol, they stop in. Um, what, when, when the shakedown happened earlier uh, from before, when you were talking about some of the, uh, the corruption and everything, uh, just to just to clarify, what were some of the things that would happen? Uh, what was the corruption, basically? Well, you got to remember the police in not just Seattle but all over the country were paid very poorly back in the fifties and sixties, and uh, this the system back then in Seattle and other major cities was it was basically a payoff system where the officers would look the other way if your business was doing things it shouldn't have been doing in return for paying the officers on a weekly or monthly basis. So in other words, if, if, if you were a business downtown, let's say on 1st and 2nd Avenue, and you wanted to sell flowers out in front of your shop, well, that was technically a violation. You couldn't put flowers on the sidewalk. But the officer would come by and say, well, I'll look the other way, but I expect this from you. And you know, that, that payoff, uh, situation it grew like a, like a big octopus mm -hmm. and that you know you started off with flowers and then you'd have officers that were wanting free drinks and bars and you'd have officers that were now wanting to uh, not only eat for free at your restaurant but bring their families in for free and uh, or uh, you know if they were wanting to have additional monies from the gay bar owners, for example, you know, there was blackmail involved and outing customers and, and doing all that. I mean, it was a huge machine that could only function back in the day uh, with the cooperation of all city government levels, the police force. Uh, it, it, the police themselves would not have been able to do this unless the machine was allowing them to do it. Sure. Uh, and I don't think it could exist today. I, I think that even though you know, since I've been on, I made it very clear that I wasn't going to tolerate any of this kind of behavior around me and that I wouldn't hesitate to go turn anybody in that did it. And I did that for a couple of reasons. First of all, because I realized the officers that were clean on this department, which I think the majority of them were, you know, were saying, all right. And the ones that weren't, 
would not be doing it around me. And I think with, with the change in the media now that we've got, uh, you know, you don't have such a cozy relationship with the press right. and the police as you used to back up through the 60s. And uh, I, I think the caliber of officer we have on the Seattle Police Department would no more tolerate corruption right now than they would anything uh, that would bring discredit to the organization. You know, my generation won't tolerate it, and I can guarantee you that the younger generation won't. And, you know, we've still got a few officers from, you know, back in the day. There's very few of them left. They know that, you know, I guess I'm the old guard now with 31 years on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll be here for, for a while longer, and then the younger generation will take over, and they'll be the old, old guard. So. Uh, I, I think it's a thrilling time to be a police officer in the city. I think it's an exciting time to see what the communities are going through right now. And uh, I don't have any regrets about being a cop in this town. Right on. It's been a great ride. Right on. All right, let's stop there. Cool. We